Welcome, my name is Vince, and today I want to talk a little bit about antenna height. Normally, I would tell you the higher you can get it, the better you would be, and that's true in most cases, but there are a few antennas, like the cobweb, that works good around 35, 40 feet, and then you got an NVIS antenna, near vertical incident sky wave, that works good 12, 15 feet off the ground. Now speaking of ground, that's something we all have in common, and not all ground is the same. Some ground is moist and works better other ground is real dry and not as effective now let's hop over to the computer so i can do a little demonstration now let's say down here we have the ground and up here is where our antenna is excuse my drawing i'm drawing with a mouse and it's not the easiest thing okay so here we have our dipole and on each end we'll have our electric field In the middle, we'll have a nice magnetic field. And when we transmit, it starts to radiate. It radiates downward. Now, the strength at which this field hits the ground is dependent on the height of the antenna. Now, actually, when your antenna is radiating, you have three fields. You have the one field that radiates and carries your signal all around the world. You have a second field, maybe one to two wavelengths. And then you have a third field that radiates but dissipates quickly within, which is the one we're talking about here, which is an induction field. And when that hits the ground, and if you're not high enough, it's going to induct current or induce current into the ground. So up here, you have it going the same way. Now this current hitting the ground and the induction starts, it's going to induce current to radiate back up. And the lower your antenna is to the ground, the more you're going to have and hit your antenna. And it's going to go into your antenna. So let's say this arrow here in this direction is your current. So this, the one that's coming back up will be your reflected current. And it's going to go into the antenna. It's going to go back down the feed line into your transmitter and it's going to raise your SWR and it's going to cause your transmitter to heat up which will then with more modern rigs cause the power to be reduced. Now this effect occurs a lot with multiband antennas. Let's say you get a 10 to 80 meter antenna up and it works great on 15 or 20 meters because that's the height you have. Well now when you go up to 40 or 80 meters now your antenna is not high enough and that's when this effect's going to start or become worse and reduce the performance of your 40 or 80 meter band. Now you may want to get around this but the only way to get around it is to raise the antenna. There's no other way. Now most of the time getting up a quarter wavelength will work but it's not ideal. What you really need to be up is one wavelength or more. And you may be able to do that with 10 meter or 15 meter, maybe even 20 or 40, but when you get up to 80 or 160, that's just, you're getting impossible. I believe 80 meter height for one wavelength is like 280 some feet. You get it up as high as you can. Maybe you can get it a quarter. Maybe you can get it even a half. And that's good. It'll work. And you'll have more performance than you would have if you was only one wavelength at 15 or 20 meters. Okay, I hope you found this helpful. Please remember when you're erecting the antennas to be careful with round power lines. You know, that's something that could kill you. And always stay safe. Please remember to like, subscribe, ding that bell, and 73s.